Welcome back everybody to another full room solve where we'll explain and solve all of the puzzles in a given room for Escape Simulator. Today we'll tackle the next in the series of Labyrinth of Egypt, so it's the fourth room called Chamber of Danger. Let's jump in. So in this room, it's a little different setup than the last couple that we've tried. A lot of the times they'll give you a note or give you some sort of an idea of what you're actually looking for as you go through the room and solve the puzzles or unlock the combinations. Um, if you look around the room here, you can see there's an empty pedestal, um, obviously four spots here where you would put something. You can see here that unlocking this puzzle, you would get a gold ball. Unlocking this puzzle, it's a little harder to tell, but there's a red ball in there. We don't know what we get from this, but we can kind of start to put the pieces um, together there that we would probably unlock a ball from this puzzle. And we also start with a blue ball just kind of randomly in behind us here. So we can go ahead, pick that up, and just place it in any one of these pedestals for now. Ultimately, this solving this puzzle, um, we're going to have to put them in the correct order to um, proceed to the next area of the room. But... So we can start the room that way for now. Like I said, a little different setup than usual, but um, in terms of solving puzzles, again, it's very much a room that doesn't really matter the order that you solve the puzzles, but I always usually like starting on this one on the side here. So you can see that we've got another wall lock here. There's a combination of signs. Some of the signs are the same. Some of them are missing. Um, some of them are different, obviously. It looks like we have um, three symbols here possibly missing a fourth you look on the floor now you know you're definitely missing a fourth so go ahead pick that up plug it into the missing spot and then we can start this puzzle so essentially with this puzzle what you're trying to do is figure out what the missing symbol is to be able to plug that into the combination and it's really cool too because obviously I mean how this one works just because it's the first um, set of of symbols here doesn't necessarily mean it corresponds to the first position in the lock. What you have to do is almost follow the tails and figure out what position that one's going to be going to be for. So this first set of symbols, whatever the missing one is, is going to unlock or is going to be put into the fourth position of, of this lock here. So usually what I like to do is obviously start with the signs that are a little bit more obscure. So for this example, obviously we have, there's only one owl noted on all of these. So this is either, this piece is either gonna be four here or it's gonna be one of our missing symbols. So we can go through, start with the owl. Now we have the camp showing. So we know there's a camp on this one here and there's a camp on this one here. So the owl symbol is either gonna be the missing piece for this lock or we are looking at this entire piece. So we know if the next one is the lion, which it is, the next piece or the next symbol that we uncover is gonna be the missing piece here and will ultimately be the third, um, the third symbol in our combination. So we can go ahead and figure that out. So it's a feather. So as you can see here, we don't have a feather, but we'll plug the feather in. Just so happens that it's already kind of there for us, but that's the third position there. Um, so we can start with the second owl. We already know because we've already done the one puzzle with an owl in it that this is going to be one of the missing symbols. So we just have to figure out which one that this actually belongs to. So we have a squiggly there. There's only one common one set of symbols here with that squiggly. So we can pretty much assume that this owl piece is the missing key here. But just to confirm, we can either make sure that we have an upward slope or a corner as our next piece. There's the corner, there's the upward slope. So we know we're trying to plug the owl in somewhere in here. We just have to figure out which one it belongs to. So you follow the tail through. That's gonna be the second position here. So we have these two done. The next one, we have a corner piece. We've already used this, so chances are it's this one here. We'll need a square or a camp to confirm that. We got our square. We have another corner piece, which chances are is our missing symbol for here. But again, just to confirm, we'll make sure we roll a camp, and we do. So the corner is going to be our fourth position. Perfect. So the last one is the piece that we picked up. So we have an upward slant. Really, 
This is the only one that we haven't used, so we know it's going to be here. We just need to figure out what the missing symbol is. So we have the upward slant. We know it's not that. This isn't represented on this at all, so we can pretty much figure out that this is our missing piece. But just to confirm, we have the feather and we have the square. So we can go ahead and put that squiggly and we've unlocked a ball. So for right now, like I said, we won't worry too much about the order here as there's a way to go in and figure out afterwards what that is. For this one here, press the button and we basically just have to follow the lights. And this will kind of tell us what order we're supposed to be hitting um, the, the slabs on the bottom here. So press it again. We have a human, then we have a dog, then we have the bird man. So a combination of the human and the bird. It goes to a bird and then the dog man. So a combination of the dog and the person. So if we just follow that order, we will press the human, press the dog, press the bird man, and then we want the bird and then the dog man. After we go through and do that, obviously we get the black ball here. No real need for order yet. Now we're on to the last puzzle. So basically with this one, what you want to do, there's instructions at the front and we're basically trying to recreate each of these three scenes. So pin it up to the top and then basically what we're trying to do, we'll do the first one here. So Camel drinks in the Oasis at the sun's zenith. So zenith with the sun is right at the top in the middle there. Um, to get the camel to drink in the Oasis, the Oasis is almost this like jungle swamp thing on that side. So basically what we want to do is get the camel over to there. This just indicates the position of the slider. So by sliding it right, we're going to be able to get the pieces to move all to the right. So we want to get the camel to move to the right. We're going to flick that over there. The scorpion's hiding in the pyramid. So obviously to get it to move from right to left, we want to flip this back over and hide that there. So we've already unlocked now this first scene. Obviously we didn't have to do with it anything with the sun because it's already in the middle. So now to complete the second scene. So camel sleeps by the pyramid when the sun sets. So to set the sun, obviously we want to get it to move one to the right to get it into the night sky. Sun is this middle thing here. Um, the camel sleeps by the pyramid. So we need to get the camel over into the middle more now. And the scorpion lurks in the oasis. So we want to get it back outside. Awesome. So we've completed that second scene. And now the last one. So the camel is bitten by the scorpion at the sand dunes. So now we want to get the camel over to the sand dunes. So obviously to the left side of the pyramid here. We want to get the scorpion, if it's going to bite the camel, to the far left side as well. And now we want where the sun rises. So to get the sun to rise, obviously it's got to be in this left quadrant also. We'll flick this over twice to the left and we've unlocked the red ball. Awesome. So we have our four balls. We'll hit this switch here. And then we can tell which ones are in the correct position because they light up yellow. Obviously we know red and black didn't light up, so it should just be a relatively simple switch. Hit the switch again, and we are all good there. Now we've unlocked, sorry, I'm just gonna in, unpin this real quick. So unpin that. So we'll pick up this mirror piece and it just plugs into the middle of the floor here. Obviously we have to do some sort of light reflection here. So with this center floor maze, really what you're trying to do is you're trying to get all of the rings to line up. These outer rings, we want the um, slots to line up with the arrows of each one of these scarabs here. As you can see, spinning it twice to the right, everything lines up. Now we gotta do the same thing for this middle ring. We gotta make sure that all of the channels line up. So we have connection here, we have connection here, but we don't connect on that side. Uh, spin once more. So now you can see that these channels all line up. We'll just do the same thing now with the middle piece to get a connection here. Sometimes this gets a little finicky, but there we go. Now we can see the light fills. The column busts through the ceiling and we've escaped. 
So there's a couple of more complicated puzzles in this room, but ultimately still really fun, still really intuitive for the most part. Um, hopefully this video helps. If you were stuck anywhere, drop a comment. Let us know where this video helped. Like and subscribe to Friendly Frenzy Games for more guides, tips, and tricks.